What's good? Today I wanted to speak about record labels. Record labels is something that, you know, when I get into it, I can get quite passionate. And I remember I used to be super passionate, especially in the comment sections of certain written posts that I would do about record labels. Um, I remember I even got a message from a record label, um, an independent rec record label owner telling me to, you know, that I shouldn't be putting messages like this out, you know, it's bad for business and that type of thing. And artists need to understand that they have to go through rec recording contracts at some point. They have to just bite the bullet and do it. Uh, to which I replied, look, you've got your opinion, but I am going to speak my truth. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, yeah. So with recording contracts, I always, I used to take the stance that there is no such thing as a good recording contract. Um, most of that still holds true. But I have seen certain situations where a rec recording contract might favor the artist, right? So in these situations, it's important to understand that you are going to need someone to assist you because there's always going to be some kind of paperwork. And being able to go through that paperwork effectively, not just going through it, but going through it effectively is going to be important for you. Um, I've spoken to a few attorneys and the feeling is still the, the feeling is the same amongst a lot of them. Artists might contact them and ask them to go through the contract. Um, the uh, attorney, whichever legal representative will go through that information, you know, ask the, 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 their client if they understand what's going on in the contract. They'll say no, they'll explain it to them and say, this is actually what the implications are. The artist will go, hmm, this is not so great. But then the artist will still then go and sign. More often than not, it's a piece of paper in front of them and then there's a number. At some point, there is a number of some kind of an advance or some kind of money that's going to be paid. And that is, it's, it's just super enticing for them. So they just, yeah, that's, that's it for them. So, um, yeah, I would say just be mindful that a recording contract is a contract. Right? That's the first thing. And there's always a time, there's always a period, right? They might say to you two years. The period might be in terms of time, but it might also be in terms of output. So your um, contract might say that in terms of output, there has to be a certain amount of albums. So there has to be a certain amount of tracks, um, all measured within the contract. You know, they'll tell you exactly how that's going to be measured. Um, then you also need to make sure that there's, you need to understand who makes money where, right? Um, and that is a tricky one because there's certain contracts where it's so it works 360 and yeah the, that's effectively what it is it's so for everything so understand what you can do in your own capacity and what you can do uh, what you do in the capacity of being a part of this record label and this is much the same for music publishers any sort of licensing deals for any music that you might make you have um, you've got you yourself the entity um, and the music that you make and you just need to know how much of that is housed under the label so you can have a situation where you yourself are housed under this contract meaning all the music that you put out must go via this channel through the label through the music publisher whatever it might be exclusively there are situations where um, you offer over an amount of work and that might then be you the entity over here but then the label is over there and you, the entity, will send music there to say, these are the songs I want to give to you exclusively. Make those work, right? Which is a nice sort of thing because you get to work with those tracks exclusively, but then you're still able to go and do your own thing over here. Then there's certain situations where um, it's non-exclusive in that that music might not... Um, uh, it might not... It'll be used by the record label that's over there, but you can then maybe also then go and send it over there, send it over there, send it over there. Those are more your non-exclusive. Those ex I've only really seen those existing in a, uh, in the world of publishing, in music publishing. Um, those are tricky because then you need to also just figure out is it a, is it a t territorial thing? Does it only happen because I'm in South Africa and I want the music to play in the States? Or is it a thing of it doesn't matter, I can send it to this publisher, that platform, put it in that place. Um, yeah, so just understand what exclusivity within your contract means. Um, certain things that might disadvantage the artist, I think clauses, because I don't know. I feel like a clause, enacting, a, having a clause within a, a um, within your agreement, can work in your favor. Sometimes it might not, but usually it doesn't. Just 
think about the option clause where they'll say we have you here for two years in that time we want you to do two albums and then there's an option for us to add an extra year or add an extra two years or whatever the case might be having that clause in there and having the record label look at you and be like oh cash cow there is money in this person and then activating that clause and saying we're going to keep you for another year when you didn't understand it that you know that can work that can definitely work to your dis- uh, your, your disadvantage um, and also just in terms of creative direction as well also understanding what sort of creative direction do you have are you going to be forced to sit with a music publisher who's going to go through the sound that you're going to cultivate and they only allow certain songs through to be released because that can be frustrating especially if as an artist you're more into hip-hop and you sort of want to venture into an alternative field that is hip-hop but of a different sort of sub genre and they're like no 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 no, you can't do that it must be in a particular lane and that controlling of the narrative can be a bit frustrating. So understand what sort of creative freedom you have and what sort of creative authority they have. Because if those don't marry, oh, you can have a terrible situation where you're literally just, you know, you're sitting on your hands waiting for the contract to finish, um, which is horrible. Um, understand what an advance is. Understand what you're getting in terms of money or whatever opportunities, whatever it is that you're getting. And understand what you are paying for as the artist. So... Generally, in that situation, if you are getting an advance, it's money that's not handed to you because you're so dope. It's money that is afforded to you with the, um, what's the word? There's a um, nice term, with the um, obligation to pay it back. You're going to pay that money back. And if there's anything that happens around you, you're going to pay for that as well. You're going to go into the studio, you're paying for that. You're not just because you're part of the record label, you you get to go to studio for free. That's not how it works. I know people hit me up all the time. They're like, yo man, can I be under your studio? What does that mean? Even if I did have a contract for you, you would still be paying for studio time. So at the end of the day, there's no such thing as free studio time unless you contact your homie down the street and ask them for free studio time and they give it to you. So it's just understanding that aspect of it as well. Things aren't for free. It's a business that is approached to you because they see you as a potential asset they want to bring you in and have you under contract so that they can give you more of their resources you get to leverage off of them that's their whole selling point you leveraging off of them but they're in fact going to try and leverage off of you because it's a business and a business's aim is to create is to generate profit and if you can do that great if you can't well then they're going to toss you out and they're going to go and get someone else to do the same thing so just bear that all in mind it's not a it's not, I think my issue is not with, it was with the, it used to be with the record label itself, but it's not. And I used to push my energy towards the record label saying record labels are terrible. But at the end of the day, it's the person who will eventually sign to the record label. Look, the record label does, they've got their um, um, tactics that they'll use. They might ask you to sign quickly and they might say, hey, there's something, we know we, the, 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 the people aren't going to wait that long. You know, you can go and have a look over it, but we need an answer by tonight sort of thing. And you sort of get that pressure around you. Also, as an artist, you are most likely in a situation where you're working from a point of desperate behavior because you've been looking for an opportunity like this for such a long time. And now that it's finally in front of you, you want to grab it before it goes away. So, They're working off of all of those different psychological factors. And unfortunately, they're a corporate, they're like a, they're a full on company and entity. And you are just the artist. You might not have people around you to advise you well. And all you want to do, you're like, one signature, come on. And then you, you're in. So be careful, go over your contracts. And as the artist, listen to people who give you advice about certain things. Listen to qualified people, obviously. Um, I like to believe that I have some experience. I'm not in the legal space. I'm not in the accounting space. I mean, none of those spaces. What I am is um, is an artist. I'm a composer and I've been doing this for more than 10 years. So I've seen some stuff and I've seen a lot of things go wrong. I've seen some things go right. But more often than not, there's miscommunication, misunderstanding, anger, messages, phone calls, threats, potential to sue just a whole lot of nonsense that can be avoided if there's an understanding if you're going to go into a five-year contract and you know what you're getting out of that contract and you know that you're going to be mulled dry by that in by that organization and you're okay with it because you get to leverage off of their resources it's a different story in which case do you you know that's fine but understand what you're getting into is what i'm trying to say anyway if you have any questions let me uh, know pop them in the comments 
Um, I will be, I'll probably do a follow up to this. Just I've got so much to say about record labels and contracts. I've signed some terrible contracts myself. So I want to go through some of those so that you don't have to go through them as well. And yeah, we will keep the conversation going in the comment section. Peace.